In terms of their value as of right now, this video ranks the best point guards in the NBA. The point guard dominated era seems like it'll continue into the 2020s with up and comers like De'Aaron Fox, Ja Morant, Luka Doncic, Trey Young, and LaMelo Ball ready to carry the torch. In my opinion, based off the advanced stats and evident on-court value, these are the top 10 best floor generals in basketball. Over three quarters of this channel's viewers aren't subscribed, so if you haven't already and enjoy my content, help me get to 50k by subscribing. Also, hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into this. Honorable mentions to Jamal Murray. This list doesn't include injured players. LaMelo Ball, who flashed all-star potential in his rookie year. Malcolm Brogdon, who averaged a solid 21-6-6. Kyle Lowry, who's been one of the better two-way guards over the last decade, and Ben Simmons, who comes up just short of making the list. Number 10, De'Aaron Fox, one of, if not the fastest, end-to-end -end player in the league. Last year, Fox became one of just seven players in league history to average 25 points and seven assists prior to turning 24, joining legends LeBron James and Oscar Robertson on the list. For posting 25-7 and seven on 48% shooting from the floor and ranking 7th among point guards in player efficiency rating, Fox deserved a spot on this ranking. His distance shooting efficiency needs to get a lot better and he's sloppy with his ball handling on occasion, but with his naturally gifted abilities, the sky's the limit for the lightning quick lefty. Number 9, Ja Morant. Dropping 47 in his second career playoff game against the Jazz could give you a solid argument as to why Morant deserves a higher ranking. While his playoff coming out party was something damn special, let's not let recency bias overrate him. He just finished his second season, and his three-point shooting plus his ability to control the pace still need to improve. But if there's anything we can take from Morant's playoff outburst last spring, it's that he could take a massive step forward in 2021-22. The 22-year-old took a ton of confidence into the offseason after pouring in 30.2 points, 8.2 assists, and two three-pointers over five games. The key for Ja is becoming at least a league average three-point shooter. If he can force his matchup to go over screens instead of cheating them, he could move up on the list. Number eight, Drew Holiday. One of the best on-ball perimeter stoppers in the game is coming off a championship run with the Milwaukee Bucks, where he wasn't only elite defensively, but also the perfect third scoring option next to Giannis and Middleton. If he was a tad more consistent from the field and could create a bit better offensively, Holiday would easily rank in the top three to five because his defensive IQ, lateral quickness, and strength is that special. Number seven, Russell Westbrook. An injury-plagued opening to the 2021 campaign had fans speculating if Russell Westbrook was finally approaching father time. A beastly second half of the season where he fueled the Wizards into the first round of the playoffs got rid of that narrative. Westbrook led the league in nightly assists with 11.7 was dominant from March until the end of 2020-21, averaging 24-13-13 to go along with 1.5 steals while shooting 44.3% from the floor over a 36-game stretch to close the league year. Don't forget about the value Russ provides defensively. Despite being on the number 20 ranked defense, Russ ranked third in defensive rating among point guards. The near 33-year-olds fell off a tad in terms of his athleticism and infamously lacks a consistent deep-range jumper, but the tenaciousness and all-out effort from Westbrook is extremely rare to find among point guards. In LA, he's going to significantly lessen the playmaking load off King James. Number 6, Chris Paul. CP3's legacy is right up there with the top four ranked on this list. But remember, we're only taking into account current value. Despite missing out on his first ring after going up 2-0, Paul still put up exceptional numbers in the finals for Phoenix. He'll be 37 by the 2022 playoffs, so he's getting up there in age, but he still provides top-notch value. Paul's coming off a season where he posted his highest assist average since 2016-17, had the fourth best assist to turnover ratio league-wide, and led the association in free throw percentage. 
With the rock in his hands, CP3 has a dominant ability to maneuver through screens and relentlessly manufacture open looks from 15 to 24 feet. Paul's mastery as a playmaker and mid-range scorer remains intact, and he's still one of the five best point guards we have in the game today. Number 5, Trey Young. Trey's ability to pull up, step back, or spot up from 30 feet after shaking off defenders with a flashy mix of hesitations and crossovers proved itself to be superstar-esque in the 2021 playoffs. Given he won two rounds in his postseason debut, that's why he deserves to be a top 5 ranked point guard. Young did average 4 turnovers per game in the 2021 playoffs, so his ability to manage the pace and flow of the offense needs to improve given he hasn't reached his ceiling and still nearly averaged 30 and 10 in his playoff debut. The potential for Ice Trey is scary for other East contenders. Number 4, Kyrie Irving. The greatest ball handler of this generation is now a member of the 50-40-90 club, becoming one of nine players in NBA history to shoot 50% from the field, 90% from the free throw line, and 40% from the three-point line. Irving did miss 18 games, but that efficiency is historically great nonetheless. Kyrie tragically landed on Giannis Adetokounmpo's ankle in the second round. Before that, Uncle Drew was saucing up his matchup like the vintage version of himself as Irving put up 25 on 50% shooting in the first round and had already posted three 20 plus point games in round two before getting injured against Milwaukee. While his 27 and 6 averages were exceptional, Kyrie's impact can't be fully measured by his numbers. When he finds his rhythm and is making any player tasked with guarding him look subpar, that shakes the entire opposing team's confidence. The 2021 playoff bracket likely plays out a lot differently if Kyrie stays healthy. Number 3, Damian Lillard. The Blazers haven't had any postseason success in recent years, but you can't blame that on Damian Lillard. Portland wouldn't be in the top 8 every year without him. The combination of generational talent and loyalty from Dame doesn't come around too often nowadays. Lillard's one of the best deep-range marksmen in the world, a high IQ, extremely capable playmaker, 30-point scorer, who's still able to post over 7 dimes per game. He's one of the clutchest players in the league, and an undeniable top 3 point guard. The 6-time All-NBA player has carved out a Hall of Fame legacy. Honored I got to meet him and take this awkward pick with the Blazer legend in 2016 when I was in 12th grade. Number 2, Luka Doncic. Luka's coming to earn the reputation as the best guard in all of basketball in 2022, which will be an intriguing storyline to watch this year. Two straight seasons of 28-point triple-double averages and a recent career high in field goal percentage put the soon-to-be fourth-year player's trajectory at a Michael Jordan-esque level. Jordan flashed onto the scene in 86 and 87 by averaging nearly 40 in his third campaign, but remember, MJ didn't win a ring until his seventh year, and with how the Mavs roster is currently built around Luka, it seems like it could take four years for Dallas to establish themselves as top championship contenders. Year seven for Luka's first title is looking like the best case scenario for Mavs fans. In terms of Luka's first MVP, that could happen in 2022, his fourth season. If he won the award, Luka's first MVP trophy would come in the same year of his career that Michael Jordan took home his first MVP. With how quickly the 22-year-olds come in and dominated at the NBA level, the man can be as good as he wants. Number 1, Steph Curry. While Luka is getting somewhat close to matching Curry's value right now, Steph's legacy as a two-time champion and the greatest three-point shooter of all time is far ahead of any other player on this list. In terms of the value the chef will bring to the table in 21-22, it's still the most timely, clutch, and efficient production among all point guards. Like Westbrook, he's 33 years old and was a focal point in the point guard revolution during the 2010s. Curry's carving out a reputation as debatably the greatest point guard of all time. And given Thompson's coming back, adding another championship or two isn't fully beyond the realms of possibility. 
Let me know your thoughts on my ranking down below in the comments. Hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.